everybody. Welcome back to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And we're back for episode 42. You know, at some point, I'm not going to say I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. I'm just going to say I'm Diana. (laughs) But you're my mom. (laughs) I know, but I'm Diana. I was Diana before your mom. Maybe we should switch it. So you do. We've tried that once. It didn't work. You remember? Let's see if I can do it. All right, let's try it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Routine Podcast. No, that's your part. Gymnastics Conversations. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, wait. Let's do it again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Diana. And I'm Diana's daughter, Chelsea. And you're listening to episode 42. (laughs) That's pretty good. That's pretty good. (laughs) Maybe we'll switch it up from time to time. Okay, or or not. It's okay. I can still be Chelsea's mom, Diana. Now with that said, (laughs) yeah, right. we can get to gymnastics. The third week of NCAA gym. I know, and it feels like more than three weeks. I know. The number of meets that have been so good this early in the season is so exciting. Like, I feel like we've been hashtag blessed. Yeah, and I'm hoping that it can continue without injuries, right? Because they're performing at a level early on that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that doesn't bode anything in terms of peaking too soon. Yeah, totally. I think we should just say, where were we this past weekend, Mom? Oh my gosh, we just got back, actually. Um, We were in Baton Rouge. We went to the LSU Florida meet, yes, which was fantastic. Oh my gosh. It but was I, like one of the top three meets I've seen in my life. Yeah, I agree. And we've been to a lot but, of good yeah, meets. Yeah, we have. But can we just skip and just say coming home was a bit of a problem? Oh, man. If you guys aren't football fans, the New Orleans Saints playoff game, and they were playing at home in the Superdome. Mm-hmm. And... And a storm was everywhere. <laughs> yeah. The weather was not on our side. There was a storm in Baton Rouge. There was a storm in Maryland. There was a storm in the Midwest. So we were supposed to come home on Saturday night. Probably like 10 minutes before the meet starts, we got an email from the airline saying, your flight has been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> right. They tried to like dampen our spirit. I know, right? About the meet. We were excited. And it was like, Huh. Like I was like kind of like okay well what are we gonna do and then mom was like this isn't gonna ruin our meat experience so I was like okay <laughs> I don't know where we're staying but okay <laughs> it was true it's like I can't because we couldn't really get a signal I mm-hmm. couldn't imagine calling the airlines with all that noise behind and I definitely couldn't see myself getting up to go call yeah leaving the arena and missing the meat so yeah. it's like mm, not gonna let that enter it is what it is we'll figure it out when we need to figure it out That's... and it actually became a little dicey figuring it out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because we waited. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't know that it was the playoff game on Sunday. Yeah. So we didn't know there weren't any hotels Tells. in New Orleans, anywhere near the Superdome. The Superdome. There were no hotels. Yeah. So we ended up staying at, would you call that a motel? I'd call it barely a motel. <laughs> <laughs> Just like so you guys understand what happened, mom and I slept in our coats because I didn't want my body to touch the bed. (laughs) We slept in our socks, pants. Both of us were definitely wearing hoodies. Sweatshirts with hoods. Everything was put up on tables, nothing touching the floor. Yeah. Shoes were right by the bed. I think you actually put yours on the table. I did. (laughs) I don't take chances around here. (laughs) And so it was an adventure. Yeah. I I don't even remember when I called, because after the meet was over, we were at the hotel, the nice hotel in Baton Rouge. That's when we decided to call the airlines. Mm. And she said, we can't get you out for three days. (laughs) (laughs) And this was like at what? Probably one o'clock in the morning. And all I heard mom say was, what do you mean? There's no flights for three days. (laughs) And when mom says that, you know she means business. So they better find some flights somewhere. (laughs) Or we're going to be driving. (laughs) Yeah, train. And that was what my brain was doing. Okay, how else can I get out of here? Because we're not staying here for three days. (laughs) It's not happening. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So. Because you know how every city has like pockets 
yeah. where it's just not great. Well, and for us too, and when we travel, there's always a moment like this. Yeah. Always, it's you know we're we're on a high like when the guy took our suitcase right or, oh yeah or I left my wallet at home right <laughs> there's always something with our trip refer back I think the episode is called routine on the road right <laughs> listen to that episode and you guys will understand what mom means by someone took our suitcase <laughs> literally <laughs> right so we always know it's coming we just don't know at which point in our trip. It's going to happen. And I think it's good because you and I both know because it's coming. Like, we just kind of roll with the punches. <laughs> we do. We don't get excited. Yeah. Except when she said three days. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? There are no flights for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know what happened. But it was almost like, ah, just kidding, right? <laughs> We have one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I happen to find one right here. <laughs> and then she said, we can get you on the flight, Diana. And I'm like, but I need my daughter to be on the flight, too. She's like, I don't know if we have another seat. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> me for three days. <laughs> can you imagine? That would be so mean. <laughs> Peace out, Jeff. I got to go. Got to go. <laughs> Anyway, again, the trip was a beautiful trip. Yeah. That just, you know, helps us have fun when we travel together. Yeah. We just know it's coming, you know. Yeah. So we had a really good time. We did. With that being said, there were so many tweets this weekend. Actually, ever since we posted the last episode with Kristen Watkins, the creator of Fantasy Gymnastics, people really enjoyed that episode. So thank you all. Um, we got quite a few tweets. And we had a great time talking to Kristen. Yeah, it was such an easy flowing interview. Yeah. And it was interesting to hear her story. Yeah. The fact that she's committing all of this time yeah. um, to helping the sport, but helping us enjoy gymnastics through fantasy gymnastics. The first tweet is from at chalky underscore hands. And it says, great interview. I am a French gym fan. I'm just going to say really quickly, I hope you forgive me for my French that I've tried to do during the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I read the tweet, it's like, somebody who really speaks French. <laughs> and I got interested in NCAA gymnastics, thanks to Fantasy Gym and Ann Coom. Also, you all are doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Fire emoji. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Chalky Hands. We also got a tweet from at abgym underscored, and they said, love hearing from Kristen about Fantasy Gym. I know I wouldn't have started watching teams like BGSU and UC Davis without it. Bringing viewership and attention to smaller market teams is so important to keep the sport thriving beyond the big budget conferences. So true. Mm -hmm. Because if your fantasy team is one of these smaller teams, you're going to watch your team, mm -hmm. right? Or if you have a gymnast on one of the smaller teams, yeah. you're going to watch the team. So yeah. I think that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. And then we got a couple of tweets about just the podcast in general. The first one from at WJ Fanch. And he said, just have to say, I love the routine podcast, a mother daughter team discussing something they mutually love. That's something the world needs more. of." <laughs> That's very nice. It is. Thank you, Will. And I think the, the thing that hopefully people hear from our podcast is you and I have a really good time together. We do. And, and it wasn't always like this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just add that. I can say that that's definitely true. I think we're learning when to leave the other one alone. Mm -hmm. And we're learning to respect the other one's ideas about something. Yes, that's very true. Because I'm a lot more cautious than mom. Mom <laughs> is like a huge risk taker. And it's almost like we'll figure it out once we get there, i.e. the flights being canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> but I think that's what helps us. We balance each other out. Right, so. right. And I think because... Chelsea's my daughter of 26 years. I kind of know what she's thinking before she's thinking it. And so I can anticipate. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right. And yeah. again, I think that's what makes it work. Mm -hmm. So one more tweet. I just want to make sure we share. This was from at Derek E. Hoover. And he says, so behind on podcasts this week, but caught up today. And I literally yelled out, you have to say this, Chelsea. Yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> when Chelsea talked about how representation matters. Because. Yes! <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> 
So Derek, thank you for sending that tweet. We talk about diversity on this podcast because we are diverse, mm-hmm. but also because diversity is important to us and we think it's important for the sport. We spent many a years when Chelsea was much younger where we didn't see that diversity and it did matter to her. So mm-hmm. I think that's where she speaks from when she talks about it. Yeah. I think now because I am older and I understand the importance of diversity, like you said, I'm able to speak on it now. Right. And hopefully help the younger generation, like I was talking about last episode, because I don't want their experience to be similar to mine. Right. So thank you, Derek. Thank you for noticing. And thanks for everybody for the tweets. And that's not the end of it. (laughs) There's more? There's more. But we have voicemails (laughs) this week. (laughs) That's Diana clapping. (laughs) So excited. So the first one is from Hattie. Hattie's back. Hattie is back. She's like our O O O G listener. Absolutely. Hi, Hattie. We've missed you. We have. Hi, Chelsea and Diana. This is Hattie. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for your awesome podcast. It is so entertaining and I love listening every week. I also think you guys asked about what meets we're excited to watch this weekend. And I live here in North Carolina and I am really excited for the UNC gymnastics meet this Saturday. They're hosting Ball State and Oklahoma. So that should be a pretty good matchup, and I'm really excited about it. Further, I wanted to give a big shout out to the UNC Gymnastics Program for hosting so many awesome meets. A couple years ago, when they hosted Florida, they had the first ever hashtag Be True event, which was a really exciting meet to support LGBTQ inclusion. So I thought that was really cool and progressive of them. And this year, they have a similar diversity and inclusion meet. And they also have a mental health awareness meet with hashtag Own Your Roar. I think that's really neat that they're doing so many good themes for their meets. And I wanted to give them special props. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, Hattie, great voicemail. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because we talked to Coach Galvin, who's the head coach of the University of North Carolina last year. We interviewed him. And he's on our list to talk to again this year so he can describe exactly what they plan. But we agree with you. The fact that they think about inclusion and mental health awareness and make that a theme so that it involves the whole, not just the both teams, but also the fans that are watching. Yes. And actually, UNC is ranked number one in the Eagle Conference so far this season. Um, So they're doing great. I watched them at GW this past weekend, and they're really strong this year. Um, So thank you, Hattie, for the voicemail, and thank you for recognizing the good that they're doing over at the University of North Carolina. And UCLA, of course, had a late meet, but it didn't prevent our UCLA fans from sending us some voicemails. Hi, Chelsea and Diana. It's Bess, also known as Quad Salto on Twitter. I am so looking forward to hearing everything about the LSU and Florida meet, as well as any potential interviews you might have got in. Since I was at the UCLA meet, I decided it's time to get another UCLA fan on your voicemail with some highlights. First, just wanted to say it was absolutely electric. Uh, UCLA fans take pride in cheering on the opposing team as well, and we were really captivated by ASU's difficulty on beam, and Cairo was just really dynamic in person. As for UCLA, they really showed out on bars and floor. Fall, still a work in progress, but it was amazing to see Kendall and Sakai nail their first competitive vault, and also to see Nia do such an amazing Yurchenko full. Um, But I know what you really want to hear about is floor, so I'm going to say that I've seen all these routines in person twice this year, and they're all incredible, but the one that really transfixes me is Mars. I mean, she sells the routine. just wanted to end by saying that there are so many impressive meets across the country this week, and I'm so glad that we have three more months of amazing college gymnastics. Have a great day, guys. Hey, uh, Chelsea and Diane. This is uh, Erky from UCLA. I'm going to try to make this quick because this uh, voicemail crown is kind of heavy on my head. My neck's starting to hurt. Just uh, went to the meet earlier today, uh, UCLA versus ASU, so I just wanted to bring up a couple quick points first. Margazetta Frazier on floor. I haven't seen her in person before until tonight, um, and she was incredible. I think she's definitely going to be in that lineup and bring nine nines. I also want to bring up uh, Sakai Wright. I didn't know much about her as a prospect, but she she brought it with Vault and, and uh, got a really great score. And I guess the other person I want to call out is Justine Callis. 
And if you don't recognize the name, she's an ASU gymnast. She actually won beam with a 9925, I think was her score. But anyway, um, have a good night and love the podcast. Go Bruins. And then we got a lot of tweets about the various meets this past weekend. Um, we got a tweet from at Care Bear underscore RD, and she asked us if we were going to any meets this weekend. And we were. <laughs> and then if you guys follow us on Twitter, you know that we tweeted a picture of just like the purple and gold at LSU. And people really enjoyed that tweet. We got several tweets noting how excited mom is to watch <laughs> Seraphin again. <laughs> Which might be why I didn't care about the airlines at that point. Right. Just turn the phone off. Because at that moment, Sarah was warming up floor, so... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> America's sweetheart said, had a feeling you all would be at LSU. Have a blast and go Tigers. And Seraphin again, of course. At Just Some Gym Fan said, get ready for the time of your life in hashtag go Tigers. <laughs> um, at Oh Are We Dancer said, of course, of course, you all are there. We know how much Diana loves her LSU Tigers and Sarah Finnegan. <laughs> so clearly, mom is on brand here. <laughs> and I own it. Yes. I own every second of it. Yes. And it was a, an amazing meet to be at. Yes. And then at Quad Sotzel said, would love to hear what that meet was like in person since it was such a nail biter. Also had to check in on how your in-house Finnegan super fan is doing. <laughs> It was a great meet. Yes. And totally unexpected. Would you have agreed? I did not think it was going to be as close as it was. No, I didn't even. Sure. I think we were on the hills of the meet the weekend before where LSU lost to Auburn. Mm -hmm. And I think we felt that that didn't bode well for the meet that weekend with the University of Florida. I did have that, but also at the same time, I knew that the environment at LSU was just going to be unreal because everybody knows about the meet last weekend at Auburn. Mm -hmm. And you already know that the LSU fans go hard. Mm -hmm. And they did. Yeah, they were ready. They were. <laughs> they were. I mean, LSU was in the lead up until the last event. And just to get a feel of what it was really like in the arena with, I think they said, over 12,000 fans, just take a listen. Feel it right. That's what it felt like in the arena. They have their own DJ, and he was playing music all night. Mm -hmm. And they had their band there, and they had the cheerleaders there, and they were flipping the cheerleaders, and they were <laughs> flipping the L and the S and the U. And then everybody had their own little gold pom pom pom. pom. We had our gold pom pom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. And Dee Dee was walking around. Yeah. <laughs> It was hard not to be an LSU fan in that moment. <laughs> it but. really was. <laughs> so then LSU started on vaults and Florida started on bars. Mm -hmm. And we were closer to bars where we were sitting at that time. We moved around, guys. Yeah. We didn't necessarily follow our ticket numbers. <laughs> no. Instead of bar hopping, we seat hopped. <laughs> <laughs> but we moved if somebody said move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
I would say the bars rotation for Florida was definitely not the same as it was for them last weekend at home in terms of just like the performance factor. Okay. The handstands weren't always hit. The landings definitely weren't there the same, but it was still a pretty good rotation for them. Well, I think they were tied after the first rotation too. If not, they were very close. And can I just say this? I know you're going to talk about bars, but I I just have to say vault started with Sarah Finnegan. Yeah. (laughs) And like whenever she stuck that and it wasn't like a questionable stick, she stuck it outright. She did. And people just like lost their mind. They did. Because it was gorgeous. It was. It was the best vault of the night, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. It was. Even including all of the one and a half. Yeah. It's just her form. She flares her arms out Mm -hmm. and she has... Absolute control. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah, she knows exactly where she is. Yeah. But another surprise was um, McKenna Kelly. She was in the vault rotation. Yeah, we had no idea. Yeah. And she has a 10-0 vault, which is great for LSU. So they actually only had one 995 vault. Right. And then on bars, Trinity Thomas, she actually had the team high of 9925 on bars. Wow. And she's just so, you said this how many times at the meet, she makes everything look so effortless. She does. And you know the skill is hard because you know it's a hard skill. But then when you watch Trinity do it, it's like, oh. She's just floating. Yeah. And then you really wonder, at least I do, what can she really do? Right, exactly. Like, this is probably a quarter of the actual gymnastics that she can do. Yeah. She has so many more skills right. in her back pocket. You just know it because yeah. she makes it look so easy. Yeah. When she did her one and a half on vault, you know she can do a two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a two and a half. Maybe a two. Maybe a triple. <laughs> yeah. So that, she's fun to watch. And I think she's going to be really fun to watch over the next four years yeah maybe because a lot of people are curious about trinity what were your thoughts of watching her for the first time in person she actually reminded me of you and that not in terms of gymnastics (laughs) let's just clarify i yeah i would agree you know your mother likes to stretch some things sometimes when it comes to her daughter but in you're right about that not in terms of skills but in terms of shyness, mm-hmm. she's very reserved. Yeah. And I, you know, we kind of felt that when we did the interview, mm-hmm. right? But you could definitely see that in person that she seems to be uh, similar to you, a little shy. Not an ounce of arrogance. Zero. Yeah. And just enjoying her time with college gymnastics. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw. She definitely seems like a freshman. Like she's, and again, this is only her second meet, but she's definitely trying to figure everything out. And so that's why I said she reminded me of you in that respect. And of course, there was Alicia. Oh, Alicia. Right? Alicia is like, I feel like she's like kind of the heart and soul of University of Florida now. Yeah. And we would have never have guessed that. No. Her it's like freshman we talked year. About, and we talk about it with Trinity. It might be the case with yeah. Trinity too, that yeah. they evolve mm-hmm. uh, as they get more comfortable. Yeah. I, I've jumped so far. I'm sure <laughs> I know. Chelsea didn't want me to do this, but Alicia's floor routine. Yes. I agree with all of the things that you said. Another person that we talked about from the University of Florida a lot was Amelia Hunley. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. She's a competitor. Well, I think we even said it at the meet. She's our Michaela from Utah. She is. Amelia like, is. Game on. I got this. Yeah. Whenever she, whatever event she was on, you weren't worried about it at mm. all. No. You knew she was going to hit. So then LSU went to bars, which I think, above all, is their best event this season. Mm, well, I, after watching them on Beam this yeah. weekend. Beam was good. But I feel like that's their most consistent Bars. They, yeah, they, yeah, you know. Well, remember, they were the number one bars team last year. Yeah, that's true. And Florida went to vault. Highlight for me, I have two. Maybe three highlights. Trinity's vault, which we discussed, is beautiful. I really love her technique. But kind of the trifecta that LSU has over on bars with Kennedy Edney, Lexi Priestman, and Sarah Finnegan. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Yeah, that's a dangerous kind of anchor rotation. Right. And it's not like the ones before them are bad. It's just those three are 995. Yeah. And Sarah was... It was a 10. Yeah. I mean, Sarah all night long, they were 10s. Yeah. The only one that wasn't a 10... Was the beam. Right. Because she had the bobble. Oh, and then a vault because of the start value. Right. But that should have been a 995. But right. whatever. Who's right. counting? I mean, I don't know what, what deduction you're seeing in, in any of that. She maybe 
cast it over a little bit on one of her handstands. Okay. So I guess, but like if you really want to be picky and the crowd just, woo! Yeah. yeah. 10, 10, 10. Yeah, I was doing that too, Joss. I was too. We both <laughs> were. And like as soon as she stuck it, like everyone just stood up and started screaming. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful to watch. She's beautiful to watch. For me, that's what made the trip worth it. Anytime you can watch someone who does gymnastics that beautifully mm-hmm. and watch them in person, yeah, you know that that doesn't come that often, mm-hmm. right? And the fact that we were able to watch Sarah compete in her senior year. Her senior year. Yeah. That was like a dagger in it, my heart. It was. I can handle it only because when we talked to her, she talked about it's time. Um, but we'll get to that. And at this point, LSU was in the lead of Florida. And are we at the third rotation now? Yes. Beginning of the third. Yes. Okay. And LSU moved to beam and Florida moved to floor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our third rotation of tonight's meet. And first up on balance speed for your fighting tigers of LSU, Christina Desiderio. And this was the floor rotation was what I was looking forward to most. At that point, we had seat hopped again, and we went right close to the beam. Mm -hmm. And floor was pretty close to us as well. Yeah. And so we watched LSU warm up beam. And again, we were remembering the weekend's previous meet Mm -hmm. on beam for LSU. Mm -hmm. And we've got these young sophomores who are competing on beam at this crazy tight meet. Mm -hmm. And we know Florida's on floor, and we know that's one of their best, if not their best event. So they've got to hit beam. Yeah. And so it was intense. Yeah, it was. And meanwhile, while that was happening on the Florida side, getting ready to do floor, it looked like they were just having fun. Right. They were just partying, (laughs) listening to music. (laughs) And actually, we got a voicemail from at Sam is the Dancer about this rotation. Okay. Hey, Chelsea and Mom, this is Sam calling in, and I figured that I would leave a voicemail instead of a tweet this week just to make Mom happy. I hope you enjoyed your trip to Baton Rouge for LSU versus Florida. It was definitely the most exciting meet that I've watched this year, so I can't imagine how it was in person. I'm interested to hear what you thought about the Florida floor routines in person. This is my first year not seeing the Gators at home, and I completely miss it. I love Alicia and Trinity's routines so much, so I'm interested to hear what your favorites were. I'm also curious what it was like in the stands during that last rotation. I know that I was holding my breath during the Florida Beam routines. And, of course, I want to hear what Mom thought of Sarah in person. Anyways, just wanted to leave some Florida love this week because we need to squeeze a little Florida love in with all that UCLA love. As always, go Gators! (laughs) <laughs> that's a good voicemail right i love that voice i love that she calls me mom you're everybody's mom <laughs> you're the gym Turnet's mom congratulations <laughs> it was fun in my opinion that was the best rotation of the night it was like all the girls knew that this rotation mattered yeah they needed to be at their best yes and so you could see it I'll talk about LSU's beam and you talk about Florida's floor. Okay. First one up was Christina Desiderio. And you know how sometimes you can watch people on beam and we were close. You can see shaking. Saw none of it. And she actually fell last weekend at Auburn. Yes. Lead off. Yeah. There was nothing. Yeah. You knew when she mounted the beam Mm -hmm. that this was a done deal. Yeah. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. She was so solid. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it started. And then then it continued that way with the other sophomores. Solid, no shaking, got this done. Yeah. Over on floor, it was just pure entertainment. (laughs) They were just having fun. The student section at LSU enjoyed Florida's floor routine so much. (laughs) Every little like cool intricate thing that the gymnasts had in their choreography, the actual music, you could just hear that the student (laughs) section ooing and eyeing the whole rotation. And I think that just goes to show how good their floor rotation is. Right. And I just have to say the students weren't ooing and eyeing over the flips. Yeah. No. (laughs) Like, that was just like, okay, another thing. Right. It was the dancing. Like, when Trinity does her leg thing where she pulls, like, one leg over her head or something crazy. They all went, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) like, what the heck? (laughs) Who was your favorite floor routine to watch? 
Mm. For Florida, not for LSU. That's a good question. You can only pick one. Only one? Mm -hmm. I think it's easy. I think Trinity. Alicia. Alicia, too. Okay, Alicia was fun to watch, but Trinity, I think everyone in the arena was just in awe. Yeah. Like, you couldn't couldn't even say anything. Couldn't take your eyes off of her. Yeah, it was just like, she almost like had you in a trance because it was just like everything that she was doing, you were trying to take in what you had just watched but she was already going into the next (laughs) unique skill and again like you said she makes everything look easy yeah and so you know for example like when other folks land the floor you hear them land on the floor yeah trinity you don't know her feet have landed no because you didn't hear anything yeah and actually trinity shared the event title with seraphin again with a 995 right both of them were beautiful. Yeah. I agree with you. I love Trinity and I love Trinity's floor routine. But Alicia's has got so much sass. Yeah. When she shakes her shoulders and walks back. Oh, and you got Nias Kaching in her routine I know. and the money dishing yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> the students love that routine. I think between Alicia and Naya, I think that was the students' favorite floor routines of the night. Well, and you got Alyssa Bauman's routine, too, floor routine. Yeah, that was her first time doing yeah. it. She she's, looked great. She's so, for a sophomore, she's just unbelievably poised. So precise. Yeah. You know, it will always be fun to watch Florida's floor. It's almost as good as watching UCLA on floor. I think so. Right? They're just as entertaining. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. It'd be great when they compete against each other on floor. And then over on Beam... Um, LSU was just getting the job done. Yeah, they they were so solid. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them. Reagan Campbell is starting to become one of my favorite LSU gymnasts. Yeah, she's so good. She's so pretty. She's so little bitty. She is. And for me, as I was watching her routine, like Trinity, it was almost like you just couldn't take your eyes off of her. Mm-hmm. And it didn't even look like she was doing the skills because the way she dances in and out of them. The fluidity of the routine mm-hmm. is like no other. Yeah. And at that point, we end. And LSU was ahead of Florida by .075 going into the floor rotation. Going into floor. And everyone started to stand up. Mm -hmm. And it started to get crazy. It did. And the one thing Chelsea said, because we weren't certain whether McKenna was going to be able to compete or not because of her injury last week, Chelsea said, Didi is putting McKenna in. You can bet that. (laughs) Yeah. And it was surprising because Lexi was in the lineup. Yeah, she was putting the A team in. Yeah. She needed the A team. They needed bases loaded for this last event. Yeah, yeah. And I think you were more into it than me at that moment. I don't think I actually realized how close it was because without Bart and Kathy <laughs> telling you, okay, this is like how close it actually is, you don't really, yeah, yeah, you can see the scores, but like you don't know what everybody needs and how things are going to pan and out. I knew only because they were getting the same score. Mm. So the first person on floor got a 985. The first person on beam got a 985. So they were matching scores at that mm. point. And that's how I knew how close it was going to be because Florida was dialed in on beam. Mm -hmm. And I knew at that point there was a couple bobbles on floor. Yeah. I also knew that Sarah and McKenna were both last. So I knew we had some really high scores still coming, but we needed that middle of the pack group to perform as well. At this point in the arena, the tension was so strong. Everyone was just like on the edge of their seats. Except for Jenny Rowland. 
<laughs> so you've got Dee Dee like pacing, right? Dee Dee's <laughs> shoes are off. <laughs> That's how game time it is at this point. And she is watching every gymnast, every move, every jump, every turn she is watching. And meanwhile, Jenny looks like she's at a park. The whole Florida team, though, the whole night, they did not look phased. That is so true. Like, they didn't look stressed. And I would commend them for that, especially for them being such a young team. Yeah. They did not let the environment at LSU phase them at all. You know what that is a tribute to? It's a tribute to... They know their skills. That's true. They trust their training. That's right. It's like somebody like Trinity. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not stressing over it. Right. And I think that goes to a talented team. They know how to compete. Yeah. And it started to get questionable after Lexi fell. Right. Because then the pressure was on. That's right. And then after Lexi was Kennedy Edney. Right. And she had a little bit of a fumble on her first pass. Right. Almost a fall. But yeah, she caught herself. She held it. But it was still close. It was. It was very close. And when it came up to Alyssa Bauman being the anchor on beam. And McKenna on floor. Yes. And Alyssa Bauman's score came in. Oh, let me just mention Rachel Gowie on being. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. She won the event with a 9925. And it was beautiful. She is amazing on beam. She is just an amazing gymnast. She's asking. She's beautiful on bars, too. Yeah. But once Alyssa Bauman's score came in as a 9-9, and I saw what LSU's score was, and McKenna was starting her floor routine, I turned to mom and I was like, she can do this. Because I knew it was lower than a 10. Right. And I was like, she can do this, especially with McKenna. And I knew she was riled up. Mm -hmm. And it was a great routine. It was. Just her first pass, she landed it a little low. A little low. It wasn't a 985 routine like they scored it, though. No, I don't think so either. I don't even know what happened on that scoring. (laughs) But she needed a 995, and I don't think it was a 995 routine. And we didn't know that in the moment either. We did not. We did not. Uh, Yeah. Regardless, it was a beautiful routine. Yeah. I think at that point... It was just two very competitive teams Mm -hmm. where the girls did the best they could that night. It's the second loss in a row for them, having lost against Auburn the weekend before. So I think on the heels of all of that, it felt like a tough time for LSU. But again, having watched those girls compete at the level that they competed, they have nothing to be ashamed about. Definitely not. they They performed wonderfully. Florida was just the better team that night. Mm -hmm. And congratulations to both teams. What an entertaining meet. For anybody that was in the crowd that night, we witnessed some great gymnastics. Can we talk about Sarah now? Yeah, I think we should. Sarah's floor routine. Sarah's floor routine was so beautiful. It's just how she dances. Mm -hmm. It's how she tumbles. She stuck her double pike at the end. That is really when the crowd absolutely lost it. Yeah. You know, we can talk about the girls and how they're really good, right? Whether it's Trinity or Alicia or McKenna or Reagan. Usually they're good at tumbling and not so good at dance, or they're good at dance and not so good at tumbling. The thing about Sarah is it's one complete package. Mm -hmm. You don't really notice that you've changed from tumbling to dance. Right. It's just one fluid, beautiful, a minute, 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why we enjoy watching Sarah. Mm -hmm. We ended the night working with Brandon, who's the media coordinator for LSU. And we actually got the opportunity to speak with Dee Dee and Sarah about the meet. Hi, Dee Dee. So what did you think about tonight? Oh, that was great. I think the enthusiasm of the Tiger Nation that showed up to support this great team and uh, what a competition. Do you have a young team this year? Yeah, we do. We've got not so much freshmen laden, but sophomores that didn't get much opportunity to compete last year and our kids that were injured and we're just now getting them back and that kind of stuff. So we're excited. We, we think that this team has potential to be one of our one of our great teams. So we were sitting just above beam when you guys were competing beam. Mm-hmm. We were incredibly nervous. (laughs) How about you? Um, No, because I just have so much confidence in that in that lineup. Our last two people are beautiful beam workers, and we had some great routines, you know, leading into that. And you know, kids that have not have not been in our lineup at all, you know, are are in there doing a super job, and they're all sophomores that didn't have the opportunity to compete last year. So we're excited, and we've got a tiny bit of depth now on floor. Uh, you know, I made the decision I wanted Lexi Priestman to do floor because that's the routine's going to score. Um, probably won't use it 
next week, probably you know rest that. But uh, she wants to have a great senior year, and she's on pace to do that. Her bar routine was spectacular. So, you know, Finnegan what, won three of the four events and, and the all-around, I think. So, I don't know, I just think this team has a lot of potential, and we just kind of show tonight that uh, we're here to compete. So you've got your senior here next mm-hmm. to you, Sarah Finnegan. Um, anything you want to say about Sarah? I, I think Sarah speaks for herself. I think she's a, a tremendous leader. She leads by example. Uh, she conducts herself in, in the gym and out of the gym and in the classroom with so much panache and so much class and she just does everything right she communicates with her team she's just a great campus citizen but she's a, just a great person sure. so Aww, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> hi sarah hello how are you i'm great so she remembered us listeners yeah <laughs> you guys are awesome <laughs> you were beautiful tonight oh thank you um which event felt the best to you probably bars um i felt really solid in my handstands and solid in my landing and I think that's the best bar routine I've done this year so far, so felt confident in that one. This week we decided to change up the lineup on vault a little bit because we put McKenna Kelly in. She did really great. So my vault is a Yurchenko full, so that's a 9.95 start value, and then all of the following vaults were 10 start values, so that's why they moved me up to that first spot but you know it doesn't really matter where you are in the lineup your job is the same your job is to hit sure well I think having you first it gives the team a lot of confidence going in it's like Sarah's gonna be <laughs> oh. awesome. got this. Thank you. <laughs> so how do you feel about being a senior in, the, in your last year here it's crazy it feels like a long time but then it's like it hasn't been a long time my body can tell that it's been a long time <laughs> yeah this year I'm just I just want to live in the moment every weekend um, take it all in because it's my last year I won't be able to do this ever again in my life which is crazy to say because I've been doing gymnastics for the past 19 years and it ends in April so but you know I really appreciate gymnastics and all of, um, all that it's taught me all of the rewards I've been able to get from it but I am looking forward to the next chapter in my life. Well, good for you. Well, we look forward to continuing to watch you. Thank Um, you. You know, we've got, like he said, we've got to April to keep watching you. We're going to miss you (laughs) come May, but all the best of luck. Thank you so Uh, much. um, You know, I'm pulling for you. Pulling for LSU. Me too. Uh, and a lot of our listeners are pulling for oh, you. Oh, great. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Good night. Really good interview. I have to say that, you know, the interview you just heard, hopefully it will give you a perspective about Sarah and how she feels about her gymnastics career. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was good because she's tired. Mm -hmm. In your senior year, I was not ready for you to be done. Really? I was not ready for you to be done. I was not ready to stop watching you do gymnastics. Mm. But I knew physically your body was done had been done yeah. so for me when she said that you know my body tells me after 19 years I totally got it in a way that I hadn't got it as a fan I got it as a mother mm-hmm. that as much as we love watching you do gymnastics as much as we love watching her do gymnastics that time is coming to an end yeah I think Sarah as a senior is one of the gymnasts that the quote unquote gym internet is going to miss the most. There's just been so much love for Sarah on social media this year. But again, like you said, hearing her say that she's looking forward to the next chapter kind of allows us to look forward. And if she's ready to move forward, I think all of us as fans should be ready to move forward. And I totally get it as a former gymnast you know, you're looking forward to life without gymnastics. And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but the world is so much bigger than just this gymnastics bubble. Yeah. So I totally get it, Sarah. Yeah, Yeah, it was good. I mean, her talking to us and sharing with us in the way that she did. Mm -hmm. It was so candid. It was. It's because she's our friend. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with. So thank you for sharing that with us, Sarah. And I know that she's going to keep fighting until the very end for her LSU Tigers. Absolutely. So thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Dee Dee. Yes. And thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. For coordinating this. It was fun really being at LSU this weekend. Yes. Um, so real quick, previews for next weekend. NC State will be at UNC, a nice in-state rivalry for them. Georgia will be at Auburn. That ought to be a good meet. That will definitely be a good meet. And LSU will be at Alabama. And then you've got Michigan at Maryland. Which will be a really good meet. And we're not planning to go there, right? I think I am. Oh, did you hear that, guys, again? She's going to go again. What's up with that, Chelsea? You don't want to go with me, huh? You want to come? If I'm able to come, I'll come. But I'd love to see Maryland compete because you keep talking about Maryland. But So that's a home meet next weekend. And then you've got Illinois at Nebraska next weekend. Which, again, should be another great Big Ten matchup. Um, We have just been so <laughs> lucky as NCAA gym fans so far this year. So many fantastic meets, and it's like we said at the beginning of the season that a lot of these lower-ranked teams are becoming more and more competitive. It's great to watch as a fan because it's real entertainment, and it's like not a lot of shutouts this year. So, good job, Mom. Another great weekend in the books. Good job, Chelsea. We <laughs> did it. We made it home. Yes. And if you guys liked today's episode, be sure to rate us on the Apple Podcast app. Leave us a comment if you like what you're hearing and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And you can reach us on Twitter at Routine Podcast. You can also email us at info at the routine podcast.com or you can leave us a voicemail like so many of our great listeners did this week on our website, the routine podcast.com. Right. You go to the top navigation, you'll see something that says be a part of the conversation. You click that, you'll see a microphone, click the microphone, and you leave us your voicemail message. And we hope you all enjoy the next week of gymnastics. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.